Hello everyone, I am Nancy Naji. I am Nancy Naji. Nancy Naji. I am Nancy Naji. I am Nancy Naji. Welcome to our segment, Hello Money. Today we'll be talking about the payday. You have to be street smart. We all know this year. No grief for anybody is our 2024 tagline. Welcome everyone. Thank you all for uh, tuning in and thank you for joining us. It's such a wet morning here in Abuja. Uh, it rained cats and dogs uh, overnight and now it's uh, a bit uh, better, but it will be nice you also hold your umbrellas. I don't know how other parts of the country are, are doing, but it's such a wet morning. Good, good weather here in Abuja. This is Moneyline with Nancy. I am Nancy Naji. Thank you all for joining us again today for the... Uh, Weekend edition, as it were, you know, it's a Friday edition because this show uh, comes up Monday to Fridays, 11 a.m. to 12 noon on uh, African Independent Television, AIT. So let's get started with what's in the news today. The federal government is set to invest $100 billion uh, annually to address uh, Nigeria's economic uh, problems. The Minister of Budget and Economic uh, Planning um, noted that recent nationwide protests against poor, uh, poor governance have prompted government officials to pay closer attention and improve their actions, attributing the current economic uh, difficulties to years of underinvestment, but assured that the current administration is committed to correcting these issues and fostering substantial improvements over the next 25 years. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria's April 2024 monthly economic report, the federal government's fiscal deficit increased by 0.1% month-on-month, reaching 824.78 uh, billion naira in April, up from uh, 823.91 billion naira in March. The report released on Thursday noted that this deficit was 7.92% higher than the budgeted 764.19 billion naira for the period. Additionally, the report highlighted a significant decline in consumer credit outstanding, which fell by 53.8% to 3.8 trillion naira by the end of April this year compared to the previous month. President Bola Tinubu has approved 10 billion naira grant for the National Broadcasting Commission to support Nigeria's transition from analog to digital broadcasting. The Director General of the NBC, Charles Ebuebu, announced this at a joint news conference in Abuja. He explained that the significant funding will accelerate the digital switchover project, a major initiative designed to improve television programming, increase nationwide access to TV services, and free up valuable spectrum for other technological users. The federal government has imposed a ban on mining activities in Nguwa Magro village, Niger state, where 12 miners were recently murdered by bandits pending the completion of the investigation. Uh, Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Dr. Dele Alaki, announced this on his official X handle that the decision follows report of foreign nationals funding mining operations in Nigeria and concerns about the violent deaths of the miners in the Shiroro local government area. Dr. Alake also urged embassies to closely monitor the activities of their nationals in the mining sector, warning that criminal behavior could negatively impact bilateral relations. The national president of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Dele Oye, has called for strengthening cooperative societies to bolster the capabilities of small and medium enterprises in Nigeria. Speaking at the 8th National Cooperative Summit Exhibition and Awards 2024, OE emphasized that cooperative societies need supportive policies to enhance their ability to unlock capital for MSMEs, noting that SMEs continue to face significant challenges in accessing affordable and sustainable capital, which impedes their economic growth and potential contributions. The president of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Association of Nigeria, Festo Susifo, at the 2024 Pengasen Energy and Labor Summit in Abuja highlighted key reasons behind the persistent fuel queues at filling stations nationwide 
pointing to weak and outdated distribution chains as a major factor explaining that the current distribution uh, infrastructure in Nigeria's downstream oil and gas sector is inadequate for the needs of its large population. Osifo emphasized that no other country of Nigeria's size and population depends on a single point of product importation and relies solely on trucks for nationwide distribution. The digital economy driven by online connections and digital technologies is transforming industries and driving global growth. In Nigeria, the shift towards a digital economy has opened up opportunities for innovation and global competitiveness, especially with a tech-savvy youth population. Uh, the Nigeria Youth Stakeholders Conversation has been at the forefront of this transition, bringing together regulatory agencies, experts, and youth leaders to discuss critical issues following two successful editions. This year's event themed Digital Economy Transition Pathway to Global Competitiveness and Sustainable Growth, it focused on uh, empowering youth and positioning Nigeria as a digital leader in Africa. Take a listen. Events will take place on the 27th of August, featuring highlights like the Digital Innovation Exhibition and the presentation of the Talent 3 Booth book. During the briefing, Les Noyef is so president of Nigeria Youth in Politics outline the key objectives of the event. The objectives include to promote digital economy transition and global competitiveness of Nigeria as the Africa digital economic giant. Two, to identify opportunities and challenges in Nigerian digital ecospace to foster collaboration and partnership among stakeholders and celebrate innovators within the digital entrepreneurship of our nation. Olufo will be Olari Waju, President Nigerian Nexus, stated that for this project to be sustainable, the Nigerian government needs to show some level of patriotism. The Nigerian people, the Nigerian government, needs to show some level of patriotism. We thank God for the organizations that are represented here today. They are, not the only rep they are not the only organization that is supposed to be partner to this project, but they've shown patriotism. They've shown that the Nigerian project is theirs and ours. Onome Amukoyo, representative essay to the president on ICT development and digital innovations, express the government's investment in digital now, infrastructure. The government is invested, has really invested in digital infrastructure to ensure that um, you know the we're able to capture the youth and um, reduce the illiteracy in um, you know the um, digital space. Now to do that we are coming up with infrastructures, we're coming up with trainings, we're coming up with other innovative ideas. for Africa to engage in serious conversation aimed at finding answers for its problems. My brothers and sisters, I firmly believe this mutually beneficial friendship will benefit from opportunities created by the African Economic Congress platform. And this is the reason we need to deepen democracy in Africa and empower citizens and civil society organizations. presidential candidate Kamala Harris has officially accepted her nomination for president of the United States. In her speech, 
as she declared, and I quote, we are charting a new way forward towards a future with a robust and expanding middle class, recognizing that a strong middle class has always been vital to America's uh, success. Building that middle class will be a central focus of my presidency, end of quote. Harris emphasized her commitment to uniting labor, workers, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and American companies to create jobs, stimulate economic growth, and reduce the cost of essential needs such as health care, housing, and groceries. On behalf of the people, on behalf of every American, regardless of party, race, gender, or the language your grandmother speaks. On behalf of Americans like the people I grew up with, people who work hard, chase their dreams, and look out for one another. On behalf of everyone whose story could only be written in the greatest nation on earth. I accept your nomination of the United States of America. Our nation with this election has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. All right, that's uh, Kalama, uh, Kamala Harris, <laughs> the Vice President of the United States of America and the Democratic Presidential Candidate of the United States of America. Of course, about 74 days to the U.S. elections in, in November, in January, we'll, the U.S. will definitely get a new president, and let's see who that is. But of course, uh, the women folk across the world are really happy with this uh, the acceptance of nomination. Uh, we are not doing badly though, especially even with um, is it Thailand just a few days ago too, a 37 year old lady as the Prime Minister of uh, Thailand. Our country, when will it be? Someone will say Nancy is in fantasy land this morning. But anyway, perhaps we should even start with the Vice President first, you know. All right, I think let's quickly take a break. Let's take a break for a short uh, moment. When we come back, I'll be running you through the numbers. Of course, uh, the Nigerian uh, exchange saw a dip yesterday. I'll be giving you more details. And after that, uh, I will have the chairman, board of directors of uh, Dark Communications PLC, uh, Raymond Dockbesser Jr., join me here on the show uh, to speak about the recent restructuring of uh, the company, you want to hear it from the horse's mouth and why that decision is perhaps imminent. All that will be when we return from the break to stay. All right, let's quickly take you through the numbers. The local stock market, that's the NGX, like I mentioned earlier, saw a dip with the all share index falling by 12 basis points to about 95,718.05 points, and that brought the year to date performance. That's the year to date return to about 28%. We've seen that figure shrinking at least in the last a few days or weeks, despite because of the bearishness of the market. Despite this uh, uh, market capitalization rose, uh, to around uh, 55 trillion uh, Naira gains in Owando as well as Transcor were counterbalanced by losses uh, in Stambik uh, and Boa Foods. We saw that the market breadth uh, was uh, positive on Thursday uh, with about 22 stocks advancing and about 18 stocks declining and that was led by Academy Press as well as Transcor 
hotels. Uh, trading uh, volume on Thursday increased by about 9.17% to around 390. 3.62 million units, while the value of shares traded dropped by close to 20 uh, percent to around 5.85 uh, billion naira. Stocks like Charms, PLC, uh, Universal Insurance, Oando led in volume, while Oando, Seplat, and Stambik uh, topped in value. Now let's move over to the money uh, market where systems liquidity uh, opened uh, at around 743.55 billion naira long with OBB and overnight rates closing at around 25% for OBB and 26% for the overnight uh, rate. Meanwhile, the Treasury bills continued uh, it's a bullish trend, particularly at the newly issued 364-day bill, uh, which traded at around 19.7%, uh, pushing the average benchmark yield down uh, by about 15 basis points to 20.5%. Now, for the bonds market, it was active with buying interest across at the board. But in contrast, the euro bond, the FGN euro bond market softened ahead of U.S. macroeconomic data with initial jobless claims slightly just above expectations at around 232k. Uh, let's talk about our Naira. The Naira depreciated on test date at, by about 274 basis points to 1,586 Naira, 11 cover to $1. Where's the cover? The CBN will say there's still cover somehow, you know, whether it's in, at, the, at the vault. But that was the uh, exchange rate yesterday, one of fifteen eighty six to one a dollar. Uh, the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market Window, what we call NAFEM. Let's move over to the United States and see how uh, stock features at. Uh, shaping up this morning uh, stock futures rose as traders are waiting fed chairs uh, jerome powell's speech is expected to hint at the future rates are caught meanwhile let's quickly move over to the european uh, market and see how those uh, folks are shaping up stocks in uh, european uh, region this morning climbed anticipating more signals from PAL. You know, when the U.S. sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. I would also be watching what the Bank of England's Andrew Bailey does. The Bank of England is the central bank of the U.K. So they call it as the Bank of England. We call it as the central bank of Nigeria. So the governor there is Andrew Bailey. So let's move over to Asia, where I will begin with Japan. Uh, headline inflation in Japan remains steady at around 2.8%. Uh, percent. Uh, of course, you've seen that there were 225, uh, that's Nikkei of Japan, was up by about half of a percent. The inflation was at 2.8%, uh, while the core inflation rate dropped to 1.9%. Uh, of course, our own inflation here in the country uh, dropped uh, at the last count by uh, the MBS. But like I mentioned earlier, it's not that inflation is not high. It is the rate of appreciation or the rate of acceleration is slower. I hope you understand that. So don't just be caught up in the jargons and all of that. South, uh, South Korea's KOSPI dipped by about 22 basis points, while Australia's SX200 ended a 10-day winning streak, closing down. Uh, so uh, the Aussies... Uh, the market was down on Thursday. Now, let's move over to commodities. All prices are a bit steady this morning, but on track to end the week lower due to U.S. employment data uh, revisions and Gaza ceasefire talks easing supply concerns. Let's check out natural gas is, is down by about uh, half of a percent. Coal is trading for around 146 U.S. dollars, 76, uh, 75 um, dollars a ton, up by about half of one uh, percent. Gold is up by close to half of a percent, 2,498. Silver, another metal that will track for you here at around 29.41 an ounce. Steel, uh, we started putting this on. We have a minister of steel, isn't it? A minister of steel. So perhaps Nigeria, of course, is thinking about steel production now. Let's see how that goes. Uh, iron ore to at $98.19 a ton. What other commodities are we tracking for you? These are intraday numbers, I must admit, because the markets, you know, they go up and down. But these figures were just gotten a few minutes 
ago. So that's why you're seeing intraday up there. Palm oil is trading at around 3,848. Uh, 3, Wheat is doing 507 US dollars 47. Cocoa is trading at 9,731. I remember about two years ago, it's not even up to two years, Cocoa's price was around 2,000, 2,500 US dollars. Sugar up $18.18, just close to 2% there. All right, that's it for the markets as we uh, move along. Let's quickly take another break. And when we return, we will get into our conversation uh, for the day. You can join us on all our social platforms. Of course, our handles are on the screen. You can chat with us also on WhatsApp. The number is there. Let's quickly take a break to bring in my guest. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the program. Joining me right now is my guest, whom I introduced earlier. He's Raymond Dokbasi Jr., the Chairman Board of Directors, Dark Communications, PLC. Hello. Hello and good morning, Nancy. Good it's morning. It's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, yes, likewise. Good to have you. Let's get started. And I, um, let, let, let me, let's go back a bit. Fifteen months since the passing of the founder. How? Has the company been holding up? How have you guys been doing? How, uh, how is everything? 15 months? Hmm. Well, it has been um, a challenging 15 months for most of us at the organization. We all had a very close bond um, with the founder. This doesn't just apply to me um, as a son. It applies to the entire board management staff of Dark Communications. We all know High Chief Raymond Aliogo Dokpasi. Um, was very much um, one of those who promoted this concept of the Dao family, which didn't necessarily discriminate between his personal life and his professional life. So for all of us, it has been very difficult. Having said that, um, we had also tried to recognize that without the founder and without the high chief, definitely we cannot continue doing business as normal. His influence, his contributions to our regular operations and to our, um, our operations as a company um, might not have been direct in terms of day-to-day -day involvement. But he was always there, he was always accessible, he was always pushing and promoting the very best interests of the organization. So certainly we have had some challenges without him. <coughs> challenges with regards to guidance, challenges with regards to where there are certain kinds of, I wouldn't say disputes, but differences of opinion in which way to go. That's father figure who would always be able to sit and be an intermediary in gui giving guidance and direction um, is no longer there. But it simply means that um, we have to refocus our energies. Um, into building an institution that lasts. So that is not just a family business, it is a PLC. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that with or without a founder, the expectation of the shareholders will be that requisite um, transition plans are in place, succession plans are in place, and um, the impact of his demise and exits will not be so profoundly felt. So we have tried as much as possible to show up um, in a number of areas with respect to um, contacts, with respect to finance, with respect to um, just general goodwill brokers who can do things for our organization to be able to bring everyone um, on board and have some kind of uh, plan going forward as to how we want to move. So, yeah. 
Um, why, why do you think that that speculation was there? Because it's been, it was brewing for a few days before a press statement was out from the well, company in terms of uh, that access uh, executive uh, management, 10 people at a swoop, um, speculations as to perhaps they are, um, you know, infighting. Uh, when you were talking, I, I put it down, you said difference in opinions, of course, succession planning. Um, the founder was a towering figure. Uh, you know, where there were differences of opinions, he came up with, you know, a fatherly, that fatherly figure to put perspectives right and um, helped the company in many ways. How would you address this? Well, you see, uh, Nancy, there is no organization. In fact, you cannot have two or three people sit together and not have differences of opinion. I sit down at home with my wife and children and we have differences of opinion. So it's for an organization as big and as complex as Dow Communications, there are definitely going to be people who have different visions or different perspectives as to how uh, the organization needs to move or progress. What I always say is that there can only be one captain in a ship. It is a recipe for disaster to have multiple persons pushing and promoting divergent agendas when, um, when, when, when what is required is some level of stability and congruence in efforts and um, pursuit of set goals and objectives. So it is not so much a function of um, internal disputes or this or that, but those kinds of scenarios and those kinds of situations must definitely arise. If the high chief was present with one glance of his, you just look at you one way and you kind of know um, this matter should not be pushed a little bit further or we should continue engaging on it. But without his presence, everybody, you know, is much more proactive in projecting and articulating what it is that they want. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Of course, um, in the course of making decisions, not everybody is going to be satisfied with the eventual outcome, with the eventual uh, decisions. I expect the case of um, letting people uh, go at this particular time would be just one of those kinds of scenarios. Um, but like has been already noted in our press release to the NGX and um, in a number of other interviews that I've given, we are primarily a PLC and we are governed by our own internal code of, um, uh, code of uh, uh, internal policies and control manual. Um, as well as other extant rules and regulations of the Securities and Exchange Commission as well as the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So in the context of that, there are issues of compliance, there are issues of disclosures. The decision whether to retire or not to retire had been taken much, much earlier in the year by the board. Um, it is only in the last few days, perhaps, um, that notices um, finally went out, notices were accepted, and the process of this, I guess, maybe one of the parties might have leaked something somewhere to an online platform. Um, and that essentially gave rise to the need to, for the company to officially come out and clear the air and publicly, uh, and publicly uh, confirm the speculation that in fact this is a decision that has already been made and uh, it's at a stage of uh, implementation. So I guess it's how the, uh, how the omelette, omelette cracked, um, but uh, it, is, it, it isn't really a issue or a concern within uh, the board or within the management internally. Um, everyone does recognize that the office is not one that you retire into in your very, very old age. People have um, occupied certain offices in excess of 15, 20, 25 years in certain cases. And that has also meant that there's stagnation within the organization. There are people who will ordinarily have been given opportunities to grow, but because their own superiors are not either leaving or growing either, they've been stagnated in one position for 12, 13 years. They came in as NYSE coppers, today they are married with two or three children, and they are not able to progress within their professional development. So there are all sorts and all gamuts of considerations which were taken into this consideration. And to suggest that um, it is only an outcome of maybe some internal disagreements, no, that is not the case. Mm. 
Um, let's go back again, because you, you have a very huge task. Chairman, Board of Directors, that communication spills. How long have you been chairman now? Well, I was appointed... Because I know you were appointed... I was, I was appointed in December was 2014. Oh, December 2014. Actually, November 31st, 2014. 2014. So that's Correct. like 10 years now? It's going to be 10 years now. Okay. We are, so that means your tenor two will soon be up. Correct. Okay. We are actually going with that question is because... To have a founder of mm. such a nature, mm. um, late, late, late high chief, with a towering figure, how has it been? Because I've been hearing you, Claire. How has it been in terms of galvanizing members of the board? From what you're saying now, you have new ideas. People that have been there for 20, 25 years shouldn't be there anymore for people to grow. How, how has it been for you in terms of bringing everyone together with that unity of purpose? Well, you see, the reality of the matter is that I have to be extremely grateful and thankful to members of the board and indeed members of management, the entire staff of Dark Communications. Everyone has been very understanding. Everyone has been very helpful. Um, it was a very early resolution, nearly immediately following um, the transition of our late chairman. There are a number of members of board and members of management committed that whatever needs to be done for this organization to move forward, the visions, the dreams, the plans that the founder had, um, whatever has impeded it from being um, actualized, if they are part of the obstacles, knowingly or unknowingly, everybody is ready to make that personal sacrifice for these goals and objectives uh, to be achieved. And so in that context, everyone has understood that there is nothing personal in any of the decisions that are being taken. Everyone has understood that where we are as an organization, there might be, an, um, there might be a case for us to review and look at how do we raise new capital for the organization. And essentially, going into those kinds of discussion, who seeks equity has to come with clean hands. You cannot say you're going to do a capital raise where investors or the market lacks confidence in your capacity and ability to actually carry out or execute on your own rules. So if you say that our management or our leadership is going to spend maximum of two, ten years or five years, and then they are looking at our books and they are seeing certain people have been there 17 years, certain people have been there 22 years, and they are asking how come you have not been able to transition are we just putting in money for a family? Or what is it exactly that we are doing? Um, it raises the need for a little bit more transparency. It raises the need um, for us to um, also do the needful as far as uh, the rules are concerned. And um, it's not really so much of a strict rule by the markets, but we have submitted to the markets that these are our own rules and we have to live up to them. Okay. Um, let's take a look at... 10 management staff, is it, it that, will yeah. be that will be exiting? Yeah. How would you, how are you planning, how is the board are planning a succession? Because that's so much <laughs> to live in one swoop. Yes. Who are those that are going to take over from them? Because there's a potential risk. There, in fact, there's a risk there in terms of institutional memory. Of course. You know? So how is the board going to handle that? Well, um, so I think twofold. On the one hand, um, we have... I would say very competent deputies who are able to come in and step in. They've been doing this, supporting um, their EDs and MDs for quite a while now. Um, in as much as our EDs and MDs have been present, they also go on vacations, they also go and leave, they also fall sick, and the job doesn't stop. The work actually goes on. So um, we have a lot of uh, confidence in the next uh, in-line succession. Um, that they will be able to come in and step up. Are you ready for that as at November for them to take over? Um, but yes, but we are also. Would they be designated? We are or also. Would they be appointed no, no, substantial? no, not substantial. I okay. mean, I mean, the, it's a transitionary period. The reality of the matter is that we are still going to advertise a number of positions, um, internally and externally. We will be looking at headhunting. We will be looking at recruiting. And generally, the entire, uh, the, entire, the entire structure of the organization, we're going to be looking at how to rejig it 
Um, but these are things which are done systematically. They are things which are done. The first and most important thing is to have the right team in place first. And then we can then look at how do we unbundle the opportunities and the challenges that we have before us as an organization. What are you uh, thinking about? What's the board thinking Sorry, about? Sorry, yes. one last thing. Okay. Because you also mentioned institutional memory. Yes, institutional and that's, memory. And that, and that doesn't just quite address it. The other aspect of it is that the board also in its wisdom has decided that in as much as people are retired or people are retiring, it doesn't just mean that everyone is going um, and they don't have any further relationship with our communication. Would they be giving new roles? Um, we, are cons we, are, we are contemplating giving some critical members um, contract, um, contract, contract roles. Um, so essentially, they are not here day to day with us, but they are here as such when required and needed to support the organization in any, in any particular area. Okay. Now, I, I, I wanted to ask shareholders' value. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, that communications PLC stock ended at 43 cover. Mm -hmm. um, how are you thinking, when I mean you, I mean the board, because mm -hmm. definitely uh, you have board of directors. How is the board thinking about giving shareholders more value? Because that communications PLC has been declaring losses. Of course, I know what has been happening. The, uh, the environment has been a bit hostile, at least even in the last eight years. Yeah, I think uh, oh, in the mm. last nine years, even the uh, uh, general business environment has not even been too friendly to even media organizations, not just um, uh, DACOMs because of, of course, we see the advent of new media and all of that. So traditional media is also trying to catch up. What I mean traditional media, both even TV, broadcasting and even print. So how is the board thinking about improving shareholders' value? That's one. Number two, do you think that perhaps... This is a bit sudden. Why I'm saying sudden, even though you said that it's been in the offing a while, but perhaps someone leaked it out there for this uh, furore to be on. It's a bit sudden to even shareholders to hear and all of that. How do you think that this will impact that communications PLC as a going concern in terms of confidence from the public, in terms of confidence to even raise new capital, because I heard you clearly, in terms of confidence in raising new capital to be able to build the company? Well, um, Nancy, first and foremost, um, as far as the valuation of the stock is concerned, there is no gain saying that a lot of the shareholder value has been eroded. A lot of the stock price has collapsed from the price at which we listed. But whilst we take some level of responsibility, we also have to recognize that we are not alone. Um, a number of other companies which listed around that time, when you look at the value of their shares today, they have also collapsed. I recall I participated in Zenith Bank when they issued um, their company stock. What price did we buy it at and what price is it today? So this is a general trend which re is reflective of the direction which the Nigerian capital market and the Nigerian economy has headed. Um, for us as an organization, definitely we will not just say, oh, it is external factors. We have to be creative within. We have to be innovative. We have to be able to see what the challenges are, mitigate against them. We have to be nimble as an organization to address emerging opportunities and deal with, um, and deal with threats as they arise. But have, how effectively and efficiently have we done that as an organization? I think we have done fairly well, um, given the challenges that we have been confronted with, as well as, like you mentioned, particularly in the past eight, nine years. Well, let me say a particular period between 2015 and 2023 um, were particularly challenging for this organization, um, that we have been able to come through that phase and come through that period with a head above water, I think kudos um, is due to the management and to the board for being able to navigate through these um, difficult times. But at the same time, we also have to be able to grow out of um, that position. We do have very, very aggressive ambitions for the market, um, and we need to be able to position ourselves accordingly. And, um, and, and essentially, that's where, that's where we are going. Have you communicated, has the board communicated with the regulators? Regulators in the case of SEC, 
yeah. as well as uh, the NGX, because I also do know, this is what I do every day, so I yeah. know the procedure. I know that, of course, even the NGX or uh, Nivul Sec will be concerned, and they may have asked, I don't know if they have asked questions, but uh, of course I know that the kind of sec we have now, or the kind of sec we've even had in the past few years, once there's something like this, they always ask for feedback. So I don't mm. know if you have communicated with them, because I assume that they'll be asking questions. Well, we are in constant engagement with all our regulators this Monday. That is what I will say. Okay. Um, how about the, the impact of this restructuring in terms of if these people, this 10 or so, are leaving, what are, what are the issues on ground in terms of perhaps compensation? You know, because these are mm -hmm. high executives, mm -hmm. the monies that they will pay to them, that would mm -hmm. also impact the bottom line of the company. Um, what, how, is the comp how is the company going to handle that? Well, I mean, in terms of uh, compensation, what we are really talking about is their exit costs, um, their gratuities, their severance packages. They should be pensions too. Uh, uh, well, yes, but the pension doesn't go directly to them. The yeah. pension goes to the pension companies. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, yeah. But, <laughs> so, but why, why, so, but why I'm saying this uh, is essentially those other line items have already been factored in the company's profits and loss. It's a question of cash flow for the organization to be able to meet these expenditures as and when they arise. And uh, as a board, we have already taken decisions and we have already given approvals. Um, to the management for how best to source these funds from existing operations um, as well as other, other, other means if the need should arise. So um, we are confident that we will be able to meet our obligations to the exiting staff and that shouldn't be a worry or concern at all. Are, are you giving the companies, the board giving the company a transitional phase? Because it's such, uh, I've seen companies that of course management team leaves or a few of the management um, uh, board of directors, some of the directors or high executives leave, or even when the company's founders or MDs, the, um, um, you know, pass, pass on and all of that, if you have struggled, what do you think is the transitional phase from now or from November till when? Perhaps that da comes PLC may begin to find its way. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, yes, in terms of transitional phase, uh, new uh, people are going to come on board and all of that. Well, I mean, I mean, new people are definitely going to come on board. Also, existing people within the system are going to be promoted. I think leadership is critical in managing change and managing transitions. Um, in any transition uh, like this, we are looking for transitional leaders. Um, and to a very large extent, we have to find those leaders within our own um, structures and within our own company. Um, we have a board corporate governance committee which is tasked with um, dealing with these issues. I'm not going to uh, jump with the gun and uh, make statements about the work that they are doing and the efforts they are putting in. But I would want to definitely assure our stakeholders, our regulators, our shareholders, and indeed our existing members of management and staff that all these considerations have duly been taken into cognizance. Um, even before the final decision on retirement and things were taken, one of the um, most recent assignments that we had been working with um, with management has been the review of our operations over the past 15, 20 years and recommending strategies um, on how to streamline operations and improve productivity and efficiency um, going forward. So we have a lot of the institutional knowledge residing with us as to how best to move things forward. What we really need is an execution team who will not just talk about what needs to be done, but to be ready to fold their sleeves and get their hands dirty and actually do the job. Will the organizational structure change? Since you said that they've been there for a while, is that they leaving? Is the company thinking about changing its organizational structure so perhaps others too can, can you know, grow ac across on, on the ranks? That's one. The second question is how involved will the family be in this? A business right now since the demise 
of uh, the founder. How involved with the family be? You are, a you are the chairman. From what you told me, your tenor will be um, um, uh, your tenor will be will elapse soon. If your tenor elapses, what will you be doing? How involved will the family be? Oh, well, um, because it's also a PLC, but yeah. it's also you know founded. Uh, the mm. company was founded by your by your dad. Of course, I mean taking the questions from the back, um, just like other members of executive management have their tenures coming up. So too will members of the board have their tenures come up. In fact, some have already come up. Um, but we have to do things in phases. Um, we have to oversee this phase of transition. Um, we cannot just take everybody out who has any kind of institutional memory and just bring in new people to run the show. Um, so definitely, um, as, far as, uh, as far as the tenures of board members is concerned, um, that is going to be the next board agenda issue immediately after we conclude with this transition um, of the executive management. I myself do not expect myself to stay in this role forever. Um, I enjoy the role, but I'm not looking forward to also doing this for the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so I'm also cognizant of the fact that um, my time is coming up. And I also have to look how best will I be able to contribute to this organization, either from inside the organization or from outside the organization. But no firm decision has been made on that. In fact, um, beyond casual mentions and acknowledging the fact that this is a reality we are going to have to contend with in the not too distant future, um, it has not properly been discussed or addressed. And so um, I don't want to make statements on national television when other uh, stakeholders need to be duly informed of certain issues. Uh, you mentioned about the restructuring and structure of the company. Yes, there are a number of things which are being considered, but nothing has been approved as yet. As so it's when uh, approvals are given for those restructuring plans, we will definitely communicate to the market, to our regulators, to you as well, and our audiences. <laughs> So how involved would the family be? You've not spoken to me about that. Are well, there other members? Are there other members of are you siblings? Well, so well, that dark, communications, dark Communications BLC still... Uh, you know why I'm asking? Has a, your your stepmom... Yeah, it's still significantly controlled MD, yeah. by Dye Investments. So Dye Investments principally consists of the family holdings and its board and its directors. So um, Dai Investment has its own board, it has its own governance structures um, and its own decision making. Dai Investments would probably be making nominations in the absence of me stepping down for whom could possibly replace my, me and my position. Um, or as a director in the board, the actual chairmanship of the board is a discussion between directors. So, um, so that investments will definitely make nominations. The question you are asking with respect to the MD of AIT, uh, Ms. Doc, rather Dr. Lua Tosin Dogpase, um, definitely um, we we value and treasure um, we value and treasure Dr. Tosin. Um, we cannot just wish her away as, as, as the case may be or some news reports. Because I've, I was I've tried to, that, to, yes, tried to portray it. Because she's, she's family. She's, she, she is family, but at the same time we cannot create special conditions for family um, when other people have the same issues. She has been there for a tenure. She needs to live like everyone else. We cannot just make an exception for her. But then, of course, looking within the broader context of the organization, both within their investments and their communications, we have had some early discussions. Um, it's not like the decision took her by surprise. She was aware of um, this, this decision coming forward. Um, but we need, to, we, need to, we need to restructure the organization first and then identify if and where she'll be able to come in. Okay, just as we end, because we have like two minutes to the end. I don't know, time, time is fast spent. Okay, director, I say one minute. <laughs> um, it's, I would like you to address, is there a rift in the family? Not at all. Uh, because, you know, I've, I read some of the interviews mm. you also gave. That there's an insinuation that, oh, there are rifts, 
oh, Raymond Junior Doc Bessy has taken decisions to sack everybody. Is your decision that you are giving to the board? No, but you don't listen to anybody and all of that. So is there a rift? Well, first and foremost, I'm one member in a seven-man board. And um, even though I have influence on that board, I don't think that the kind of board members that we have are the type to be coward into taking a position they do not believe in. So um, definitely I can completely dispel that aspect. Uh, from the position of the family, definitely there are those within the family who feel, look, your dad passed just a year ago. Um, she's your dad's wife. She's a Yoruba woman. This is a Yoruba government. Are you kidding this me? Is, it is, it is <laughs> better for you to keep her and hold her close to you. Oh, those kind of sentiments are there? Those kinds of sentiments definitely will come in and will definitely okay. be expressed. And it is not that they are wrong. It is not that they, I disagree with them. But what is the alternative? Will it be better for me to say to members of executive management to, to the market that we have 10 people who have exceeded their tenures, nine have to go because they are not dog persons, but we are retaining one. It doesn't make sense. That's not the kind of organization we're trying to lead. So um, we just had to bite the bullet, take the criticisms as, um, as they will come. Um, certainly it is not a rift. Certainly it is something which we are in discussions with and we'll continue to discuss and engage and we'll find a solution as a family. We put God, family, God and family before business. So I'm sure we will find the right solution for all of us. Okay, finally, I know I said finally. What should viewers be looking out for? Because actually this is a business. Mm -hmm. The first uh, private broadcast, you're there. I called that communications an ancestor, as mm -hmm. it perhaps F90. You know, what should viewers be expecting? Very quickly. Um, well, again, I think uh, we need to refresh and rebrand. Um, most of our most of our stations, so be it Ray Power, be it AIT, be it the relaunch of AIT News, um, we have done a lot of things very well over the past 20, 25 years. But at the same time, the industry has also moved forward in leaps and bounds, and we need to be able to catch up. There's a lot more emphasis on social media and digital media. There's also a rising youthful demographic which we are not necessarily capturing or communicating. So just yesterday, some representatives of NANS came to see me and to congratulate me and also give me an award. And they were speaking about their views on the issues of the student's loan, as it happens, that um, their perception is that that loan will mortgage their future. If the government is guaranteeing them loans, are they also going to guarantee them jobs to pay back those loans? after they are finished. So, I mean, there is a huge demographic whose issues are not necessarily being treated with sufficient uh, time and care. Um, and that is an imbalance which we will also need to be able to address. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. I've been uh, speaking with the Chairman Board of Directors of DAC Communications PLC, Raymond Dokbasi Jr., uh, make, explaining uh, the recent restructuring at DAC Communications PLC. Thank you all for your time and company this week. As always, please join us again next week. Monday, God willing, I'll be here with a fresh perspective, another guest, another topic. Be the best you can be. I'm going to change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. I know. Hello everyone, I am Nancy Naji, a financial journalist, the anchor of Moneyline with Nancy on AIT. Today I'll be talking about smart savings tips for students. Great Nigerian student. Yes. Very good. So attention students, hold your ears so that you can say goodbye to financial struggles. Number one, calculate your income. Know how much money is coming in so that you can set a realistic budget. Number two, track your spending. Monitor monthly expenses to identify areas for potential savings. Number three, Set financial goals for yourself. Establish short and long-term goals to guide your budgeting efforts. Number four, compare your income and expenses. Ensure that your income covers your essential needs, adjusting spending accordingly. Number five, buy second-hand items if you can. And if, I know you can, so save money by purchasing used items, especially books that are expensive items for you while in school. Number six, cook your meals 
cut costs by limiting dining out. Cooking at home is not only economical, but promotes self-care. I'll see you all in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Money Nine with Nancy, and join us on our program on AIT2. Hello everyone, I am Nancy Naji, financial journalist. I'll be talking about common money mistakes to avoid. And number one, ignoring financial challenges. Tough times, of course, bring discouragement, but don't let it lead you to overlooking financial issues. Make 2024 the year for financial organization. Address and understand your financial concerns. Seek advice from professionals to gain insight and clarity. Number two, avoid over concentration in investments. Don't put your investments in one basket. Placing all your financial resources in a single investment or sector poses risk of financial losses. Experts advise diversifying your portfolio across various assets like stocks, bonds, real estate, and more for better risk management. Number three, neglecting an emergency fund. The lessons we learned in 2020 from the COVID-19 pandemic emphasize the necessity of an emergency fund. It serves as a crucial safety net for unexpected events like job loss, unforeseen medical expenses. Even starting with small contributions can lay the foundation for this essential financial cushion. Number four, open communication about family finances. Discussing money matters within the family, especially between spouses, is very vital. Understanding each other's approach to money and responses to financial situations foster clarity. So if your husband is a prudent type that knows about investment, he can handle issues about money. If your wife is the same, she can handle issues about money. But joint discussions enable better family financial decisions including involving grown children, establishing a clear understanding of the family's financial standing. I'll see you all again in the next video. I hope you've learned common money mistakes to avoid in 2024. I'll see you all again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Moneyline with Nancy TV. Hello everyone, I am Nancy Najide, anchor of Moneyline with Nancy on AIT. Today I will be talking about January federal government savings bonds. Uh, the Debt Management Office has introduced two new savings bonds for subscription at 1,000 Naira per unit. These are the initial offers for 2024, with one being a two-year bond set to mature on January 17, 2026 at an interest rate of 11.033% per annum. The other is a three-year bond maturing on January 17, 2027 with an interest rate of 12.033% per annum. Both bonds are open for subscription. They've been opened from Monday, January 8th, and they will last till Friday, January 12th with a settlement on January 17th and coupon payment on April 17th, July 17th, October 17th, and January 17th. Investors can subscribe starting from a minimum of 5,000 Naira and in multiples of 1,000 Naira thereafter, with a maximum subscription of 50 million Naira. Interest is paid quarterly and the principal amount is repaid in full upon maturity. These savings bonds, like other federal government securities, are supported by the full faith and credit of the federal government and secured against Nigeria's general assets. What are you waiting for? As little as 5,000 Naira, you can invest. Check out your licensed bank or your stockbroker. I'll see you in the next video.